lots of big plays Friday night in Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium. The Philly Stars against the New Orleans Breakers. Philadelphia looking for its ninth win of the season, and they get it. Chuck is in at quarterback, doubling it off to David Riley, and Riley with some good moves turns this into the first of five touchdown passes on the night for Fusina as he takes over the lead in that category in the USFL. 7-0 Philly. Second quarter, Chuck Fusina hooks up with David Riley again. This time, Riley wide open, cradles the ball. It's a 14-0 Philly lead. Just before the half, at the breaker 19, Fusina to Willie Collier and a great catch. You get the idea. The Stars go on to romp over New Orleans. The final was 35-0. It was a combination of things. I think one, Kelvin coming back. He put so much pressure on the defense and makes things so much easier for you. I think the offensive line just gave me great protection, and we just got in the key situations where we threw the ball. And uh, we had a good time out there. We played hard. We played recklessly, and things came up for us. I know as long as I've been in the USFL, I've never seen anyone throw five touchdowns. So, you know, I'm thrilled to be a part of it and be on the team with him. We never got on track offensively. Uh, they played a perfect defensive game on, on that side, and the offense did their part. So uh, we knew that Philadelphia would be a you know a good football team, but uh, I didn't, we didn't expect them to be as good as they were. Then, Sunday afternoon, Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado, Birmingham Stallions in the Denver Gold. Joe Cribbs becomes the USFL's first 1,000-yard rusher this season. Cribbs gained 110 yards on the afternoon on the ground on just 20 carries. In the fourth quarter, with Birmingham leading 17-7, Cliff Stout on fire of late, hits Joe Cribbs on the pass play, and Cribbs does the rest, a 50-yard touchdown. He had 96 yards in pass receptions on Sunday as well. Stout throws one more time to Jim Smith. Great catch by Smith, and Birmingham rolls to its ninth consecutive win. They beat the Denver Gold now 7-3, the final 31-14. Then, the San Antonio Gunslingers at Arizona, Saturday night in Tempe, Arizona. First quarter, San Antonio on top, 7-0, and look at Peter Rayford step in front of this pass intended for Lenny Willis. He intercepts Alan Risher and races on into the end zone on touch. San Antonio leads it 14-0. Early in the fourth quarter, 17-14, San Antonio. Mike Ulmer fields an Arizona punt on his own 40. He's gone 60 yards for a touchdown, 24-14. With a score 24-21, under a minute to go. Arizona trying to tie the game, but Frank Corral's field goal attempt is blocked. The Gunslingers take an intentional safety and hang on for a 24-23 victory. Then, the Pittsburgh Maulers and the Memphis Showboat. This game Friday night in Memphis, it cost Pittsburgh's head coach his job. In the first quarter, Walter Lewis hits rookie receiver Derek Crawford out of Memphis State. Derek does the rest with a touchdown. Showboats led 10-0 at halftime. With a score 10-7, Walter Lewis again to Derek Crawford. Showboats win it 17-7, and because of the Waller loss, head coach Joe Pendry on Sunday was fired. The Maulers are now 2-8 on the season. Last Friday night, Skelly Stadium, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Doug Williams and the favorite Oklahoma Outlaws were routed by the Jacksonville Bulls. Late in the first half, 10-3 Jacksonville. Quarterback Robbie Malkus, who directed several time-consuming drives. Caps went off here with a TD pass to Gary Clark. Bulls led it 17-6 at halftime. In the fourth quarter, Malkus having off another long drive. Alton Alexis, eight-yard score. You get the idea. The Bulls rolling Oklahoma in an upset, 34-6. Real tough. We just, I think we just, as a case of us out, out executing them tonight, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Right? We've got to gather our thoughts, and we've got to get our football team back together, and we've got to get back to being a hungry football team, and we'll go out and we'll scratch here and win some games. Jacksonville Bulls have won two in a row. They may be coming together as well as they clock Oklahoma 34-6 in Tulsa. Meanwhile, the Panthers and the Generals last Sunday afternoon, over 50,000 at Giants Stadium for this one. First quarter, Michigan leading at 7-0, but this is the turning point of the game. David Green with back to punt. It is blocked by the New Jersey Generals' John Preston, and Gregory Johnson recovers in the end zone to tie the game at 7. Second quarter, the Generals go ahead. You know, Brian Seip is a veteran. He's uh, not run too much the last few years with the Cleveland Browns, certainly not with the Generals. Can he make it? Yes, he huffs and puffs his way into the end zone, 14-7. But with four and a half minutes to go in the half, Bobby Abair does his own imitation of Brian Seip, a little bit faster. We're tied at 14. Still in the second quarter. Brian Seip to tight end Jeff Speck. It's a touchdown. The Generals go on to win, 31-21. We felt that this would be one of our very toughest tests to date, and a very important for, uh, one for us, I think, to prove to ourselves that we are, in fact, uh, a legitimate 7-2, uh, and two, now 8-2 and two team, and one of the premier teams in the league. Uh, the, I think probably the bright spot for me, though, is that uh, we're continuing to get better. We've taken a few steps forward, one back, a few forward, one back. Nevertheless, this team has not peaked. It hasn't reached its potential yet. And being 8-2 and two at this point and you know, making that push for the playoffs, I kind of like right where we are.
Last Sunday's game was a tough one for Sipes' counterpart with the Panthers, Bobby Hebert, who threw three interceptions. The Panthers have now lost four in a row after winning their first six games. Bobby Hebert and company have to be concerned. The defense will be a whole new ball club, and whenever you have to play catch or football to them, it's really hard, you know, to really pass the ball against it because their linebackers are great against pass coverage, and you got veteran DBs, and you know, the adding of Brian Seib and Herschel Walker, they really can mix up the pass and running game and keep defense off balance. The Generals played well. The Panthers did not. New Jersey 8-2, and two, Michigan 6-4. and four. Last Saturday night, live from Tampa on ESPN, Washington Federals looking for the second win in a row as Mike Honsey goes over the center early in the first quarter. Honsey, though, fumbled the snap. Fred McAllister recovered. That was the story of the night for Washington turnovers because Tampa Bay turned that first turnover into a touchdown. Then later, Honsey is picked off by Jeff George. George returns it deep inside Washington Federal territory. The Bandits start an offensive drive of their own. Eventually, John Rees would hook up with Eric Trevay. This is not a touchdown, but this catch is so well executed, we want to show it to you. One-handed with the right arm in midair, Trevay gets nailed and hangs on down at the 10. What a catch. From the six-yard line on this same drive, Reeves rolls to his right, hits Mr. Dependable. Greg Boone, touchdown. The Bandits led it 14-0. On the ensuing kickoff, the turnovers continue for Washington. Eric Robinson, the leading kickoff returner in the league, has a good return going, but fumbles the football. Tampa Bay recovers at the Washington 31, and the Bandits capital lives again. Watch now as Gary Anderson, who hadn't done much in the last week or so, breaks loose. A little bit of traffic in the middle. He goes left. He scores. The Bandits led 21-0. They won the game 37-19. John Reeves was a happy man in the Bandit locker room after the game. I thought we played good in, in some parts. I mean, there's still some things that we needed to, you know, check up on. And, you know, the fumble recoveries, they were just, you know, other people making plays, and I'm just going to the ball, and they were there. I was right there for them. Well, nothing you know, spectacular about it. We had to have it, and uh, it was a short week for us, and Washington's been moving the ball very well the last three weeks, averaging uh, probably around 400 yards a game. So uh, we were really concerned about tonight, and uh, we didn't want to have a letdown. And we had a good win, but still had a couple injuries. Hopefully they'll, they'll be back. The Bandits may be playing as well as any team in the league that won four in a row. You'll see them in Jacksonville on ESPN Saturday night. What about the Oakland Invaders? They finally get their first win. Last Sunday in Chicago, this is the man that was responsible. Rookie Eric Jordan takes off here on an 80-yard run into the Chicago end zone. 7-0 Invaders after this touchdown. The Invaders ran for USFL team record 300 aggregate yards in one game. Second quarter, the Blitz go 90 yards as Vegas Ferguson finishes off the drive. Rather unspectacular by comparison. One-yard plunge for tied at seven. Third quarter, Chicago Leading 10-7, here's that man again, rookie Eric Jordan. He busts through the hole, goes 47 yards for another touchdown. The Invaders hang on and win their first contest of the year. The final from Soldier Field, Oakland 17, the Chicago Blitz 13. Then there was the game Monday night from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. LA Express Houston Gamblers, Jim Kelly, the quarterback for the Houston Gamblers, will pick it up second quarter, tied at seven. Kelly back to throw, will be sacked by Fletcher Jenkins, number 60 of the LA Express. Kelly fumbles, Eddie Meek, Cleaver Weaver recovers. He's into the end zone, 14-7 Express. Houston comes right back, though. You can't stop this offense. Kelly hits Ricky Sanders over the middle. Kelly's 21st TD toss of the year. We're tied at 14. Third quarter, after a great goal line stand, the Gamblers drive again. Kelly pitches to Todd Fowler, bouncing off the tackler into the end zone. Gamblers lead it by seven. Fourth quarter, though, Steve Young. Back to pass to his favorite target. Second-year man, JoJo Townsell out of UCLA. Young looks to his right, lays it perfectly in Townsell's hands. We're tied at 21. Houston had another dry stall just short, so Tony Fritch had to kick a field goal to make it 24-21 Gamblers. Young, though, shows what a great athlete he is. Watch this. Now, the net gain is, what, five or six yards? Watch the athletic ability of Steve Young as he gets away from these big behemoths who are after him. What an athlete he is. With four seconds left in the game, Tony Zendejas sends the game into overtime with this 42-yard field goal. We're tied at 24 at the end of regulation. In the overtime, Jim Kelly is back to pass after the Gamblers had won the coin flip, but reserve defensive back Troy West with a timely interception here as the Houston drive is blunted and Steve Young gets the ball again. The L.A. drive was stalled, though. John Hale says, I can't look as Tony Zendejas tries another 42-yarder. Is he going to make it or not? I can't look. Yeah, coach, he made it. Tony Zendejas, the hero, as the Express win in overtime again. It feels great, you know, especially after missing a 60-yarder and a 50-yarder. I had the opportunity to redeem myself, so, you know, I feel real happy. And I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity. 
Tony Zendejas talking about his opportunity winning the football game last Monday on ESPN. The LA Express beat the Houston Gamblers 27 to 24. The Express now four and six. Houston still in first with a record of six and four in the Central Division. 